everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Megan if you are new here and welcome to week two of the bookopathon if you have no idea what the bookopathon is or haven't watched my week one vlog I will leave links in my description to Becca who is the host of this readathon's video explaining the readathon and I'll leave in the cards a week one if you want to catch up before or after you watch this video so this week what is on the docket first of all i have my first day of internship on tuesday today is sunday night by the way i literally just closed off my week one and so same outfit same bitch week two i have my first day of internship on tuesday on wednesday i have class Thursday morning I have my little side hustle which the money I get from that we will use to go probably online book shopping and I work over next weekend. I have overtime on Sunday so we'll see how much reading we get done at the end of the week. However tomorrow is Labor Day and so Monday I have off and I will be doing some uni stuff and reading. So that's the breakdown of my week. Now what will be read what will we be reading if I can talk so quick recap of last week I finished my first book for Bogopoly this one was for the prompt to read a book with the and 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 a couple other words like if they had one of those words in the title it worked so for this I have pill I tried to mix Pages and Tilly together. Pages and Co. Tilly in the Map of Stories. This was the third and final book in this first arc of this middle grade series. It ended up getting a high four stars. So one book down. I also completed Frostheart, the first book in this other middle grade series, which got a four star, technically more of a 3.5 four star, but the ending was solid. And now I really want to read the sequel. And so this I had started from a Polarthon mini meltdown, which I was trying to vlog. There will be no vlog, but I finished that one. So two books down for the month. In that same vlog, I also started reading Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco, which this fulfills the prompt for history as this is set in a past timeline. Carrie Maniscalco is my favorite author of all time. She wrote the Stalking Jack the Ripper series, which is my favorite. Uh, I will leave a link to a vlog where I sob in front of the camera when I finished the last book in that series if you're interested in a little bit of humor in your day. This is a completely different style of a story for this author. Stalking Jack the River was a lot more historical fiction, murder mystery-ish. This one is a fantasy set in Sicily. It follows a main character named Emilia who had a twin sister who was murdered and essentially our main character is going to work with the last person she would have worked wanted to work with to find out what happened to her sister and who actually murdered her sister and that is Wrath, one of the seven princes of hell. I feel like this is going to be enemies to lovers from what I can understand Karen Maniscalco is amazing at writing characters with chemistry and amazing banter. Thomas and Audrey Rose are the staple of Stalking Jack the Ripper and I definitely feel like Amelia and Prince Rath have a good dynamic. We've seen them a little bit together. I am one third of the way through this book, 108 pages or on chapter 15. So this is something I want to finish this week as I mentioned in my previous vlog. I have two copies of Kingdom of the Cursed pre-ordered from Special Editions. So I definitely need to finish this before it comes out. I think it comes out late October. So you know, gotta justify the purchases. So this is the book I have started and would like to complete this week. As a second book this week, I want to start Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. I do like having something lighter than a fantasy. I'm not a fantasy reader, so I like to sprinkle in some romance wherever I can. So we're doing Act Your Age Eve Brown as my first romance of the month. This is the third book in the companion series of the Brown Sisters by Talia Hibbert. This is the youngest sister. It's a grumpy sunshine romance. Kind of hate to love. 
and I absolutely love this series. This is for mental health and disability representation. Very excited for this and this cover is most appropriate if I do end up uh, getting early to campus and want to read some romance because one of the like the other covers aren't a well the heart principle could have worked but I'm not really in the mood for that right now so we're going with this so usually once a week I think Becca said there will be dice sprints where uh, if she rolls a double, you ha need to alternate between two books, which is why I'm trying to also have two books on the go. So this is happening. This week is also the Hawthorne Legacy release week, uh, which is the sequel to The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I am a big fan of her books. They're down here. I don't think you can see them. Uh, and I love The Inheritance Games. And so... This is also on my TBR. I might drop everything and read that when it comes, or I might read along, or wait. I don't know, but it might also be part of the plan. So that's the situation. I think I'm going to read a little bit more of Kingdom of the Wicked tonight. Uh, I've been working on editing the vlog and all those things. So yes, welcome to my chaotic vlog with chaotic energy, and I hope you guys enjoy. Happy Labor Day, every one it is monday it's like 10 i was gonna say 10 p.m 10 a.m i've been up for a while got some tim warden's hot chocolate it's a wonderful and beautiful day outside today i just finished some of my chores uh including like all the bunny and cat stuff like litter boxes and everything i also have some timbits which if you're canadian you would understand how joyful i am right now but, most importantly, this is the Hawthorne Legacy. It came a day early. I didn't think I would get it today because it's Labor Day, but apparently the company that does the shipping is not like Post Canada and they don't stop working on Labor Day. So, we're going to unbox this. I did not do any reading yesterday. I went to bed with Kingdom of the Wicked at like 8pm. I still had like stuff to drink, I had my laptop on. Fell asleep, woke up at 8.30 this morning, so I slept for like 12 hours. But this is here now, and it might screw up all of my plans, I don't really know. So, I wanted to like react to the cover with you guys, which is why I'm unboxing it with you, even though I already know what this is. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, this is thinner. Okay! So... The Hawthorne Legacy. It's book two. I thought this was a duology, but then I saw Jennifer Lynn Barnes tweet on Twitter that what she was brainstorming for book three. So, um, I don't really know. It says, a deadly game, a puzzle to solve, a fortune at stake. And this is a lot shorter. I feel like I don't want to spoil myself, but it's like 350 pages. So I believe it's shorter than the Inheritance Games. Let me... Let me check. Which, if you didn't know, this is the first book in the series. Did I put the book dust jacket on backwards? I did. Wow, I am confusion. So I thought it was a lot shorter, but not really, because this isn't even 400 pages, so I guess they're... I was cut off mid-sentence, but I was going to say... I guess they are pretty similar in length and I feel like it's a really good length for like a YA, a YA mystery so I feel like it's very hard to make reading plans now that I have three books I really want to read. I mean I want to read all of my TBR but like this is definitely something I need to finish this week. I'm holding up the dust jacket because it's in the bedroom. I do feel like I want some romance, but there's also some romance in here, kind of. It's kind of like a love triangle. So, you know, these two I haven't started, but I really want to. So, yeah, I'm going to do some uni stuff this morning. Some readings, some planning, some cleaning. And this afternoon, well, you know, I'll pick something up because I it's not like I don't have choices, you know? But now I feel like I want to drop everything and read this, but it's not the way to go, you know, because I need to finish Kingdom of the Wicked. So, yeah, very excited. Good morning. I'm going to go be a productive adult today.
later on Monday evening and I thought I would update you guys because I did some reading. I didn't talk about this in last week's vlog, but usually on Patreon, I'm only a patron of Jade at Jade Where We Reads. Um, she has a super affordable like bottom tier and I used it when she did like reading sprints and stuff. But I decided to become patrons and test it out for this month of three other people. So I chose Olivia at Olivia Reads a Latte, Gavin at How to Train Your Gavin, and Steph at Steph Loves. And I've been using their previous reading sprints that I missed to read. And it's been helping a lot. So it's perfect for the month of Bookopoly. Bookopoly. Bookoplathon when there aren't reading sprints. I think they're only going to be once a week. But I decided to continue on with Kingdom of the Wicked because this is a fantasy. It's a little bit denser and it's not as easy for me to just gravitate towards even though it is my favorite author. I thought I should try to like power through this. Turns out I'm really loving this. I read up to page 208 so I literally read 100 pages today. I'm on chapter 27 and it's like 55% of the way through. I would ideally like to get 60% of the way today therefore I would have made another 30% jump in this. So yes, this story has taken a turn. I do think that the first 40, 50 pages were a little bit hard to get into, but once I really got into it, I am very much invested. I really love our main character. Um, when I went to update my reading status on Goodreads, I saw some like non-spoiler reviews of some people saying our main character is stupid, makes bad decisions, and that they don't like her. I however really do love our main character. I think she is a very good representation of what it is to be kind of whisked in a world when you have no idea it kind of exists. Like she's been told all her life that like these demons exist and blah blah blah, but she's never seen any of them. She hasn't seen proof they exist. Like it's only her grandmother that was like so adamant that like the demons are gonna come and the all that stuff you know. And she's been taught like those protect protective charms but she's never had to like face the reality that whatever her grandma was blabbering about was actually real and I think that because she's no so unprepared and because her grandmother was so unwilling to talk about the dark arts Obviously our main character has no clue what the hell's going on and I found that that representation was very well done. Um, she makes some good and bad decisions and I respect that. I love being in her head and I think her heart is at the right place and I love Wrath. He's very um, snarky and sarcastic and he knows he's good looking and he kind of uses his charm but he's also Prince Wrath and Wrath is like war and he feels like he can make you feel wrath and like vengeance and their dynamic has been more and more explored with some events that have happened in the book and I'm really enjoying it. Um, very happy that the second book comes out in literally a month because I have a feeling this is going to end on a cliffhanger and I realized as I was browsing books I want to purchase this week because I now have a cart full of books that we're going to talk about later this week, uh, that Kingdom of the Cursed comes out October 5th, which is literally a little less than a month now? Yeah, it's September 6th, so in a month the sequel comes out, which is a great timing, I feel like, to read it because I'll be able to directly go into the sequel without having to reread this because rereading fantasy for me, it just doesn't happen, we'll be honest. So yeah. This is great. I'm loving it. I will hopefully... Maybe I could read to like... Well, 250. Maybe a little less than that and that would be great. But yeah, that's kind of my update. I will be watching a little bit of YouTube while I cook uh, chicken burgers. And that's my update for now. Good morning. It is, well, almost afternoon on Tuesday. I wanted to update you guys on my progress with Kingdom of the Wicked before I went to my first day of internship, which kind of nervous, kind of excited. Uh, I leave in like 25, 30-ish minutes and I still have a little bit to do, but I think when I last left off yesterday, I was reading up to page 208 and I said I would try to get to page 250 and that was like my 
hefty goal of the day. However, I surpassed that. I read a few chapters this morning and I am now 288 pages in or on chapter, what was the chapter? 38. And oh my lord, I love this book, you guys. Honestly, if the first 40 pages of this book hadn't been so slow, this would definitely be an all-time favorite, but I definitely feel like Kingdom of the Cursed will have the potential to be a new favorite. I love this. I love Wrath. I love Amelia. I love what is going down in this book. It is kind of somewhat reminding me of Stalking Jack the Ripper in the sense that it's kind of like a murder mystery and then you have those two people who are kind of love interests We're going, working on it together. Uh, but they don't know if they can trust each other and all the mysteries that are happening. Uh, in that sense, it really does remind me of Stalking Jack the Ripper and because it's written by the same person, it does have some of the same uh, creepy grim vibes and I'm loving it. Uh, I do want to say I thought there would be just a little bit more of like physical, ooh, physical connection between Emilia and Wrath. But I feel like, you know, slowly some little things are happening. I'm hoping that little, this little, little, little bit is going to redeem that and that we're going to get more in Kingdom of the Cursed. However, I feel like there's a plot twist coming and maybe our characters won't be able to be together. Who knows? But that's my update. I'm loving it. I'm going to bring this because I'm leaving really early for my internship because I've never been to that area so I don't know how parking works and I don't want to be late. So I'm giving myself extra time so I'll probably be able to read some of this once I get situated there and then go in at 2 p.m. when it starts. I'm gonna be back home late you guys and I have to wake up at 4 40. That's gonna be my every week situation but yes nonetheless Loving the book. Should finish it today or very early in the day tomorrow, depending how much time I have to read because I have less than 100 pages to go. But yes, that is it. Wish me luck, even though this is going to go up like a, le a week later, but goodbye. Good evening. Excuse the yellow lighting, but I can't. I can't because it's 11. It's past 11 p.m. It's still Tuesday. This day is never ending. It's 11, 11, make a wish. I came back from my internship at 10 p.m. Didn't have lunch or dinner, so I sat here at 10 p.m. and ate my salad. Everything is ready for school tomorrow. I have to wake up at 4.40, which means that I have less than six hours of sleep, but it's okay because I'm grateful to be able to physically go to school as of now, because we never know with the panorama what is going to happen so i'm enjoying it while it lasts i made my lunch got my outfit ready my backpack is packed my electronics are being charged and my bunnies are out because i try to let them out obviously as much as i can but being as neurotic as i am i got to my internship an hour before i had to be there so i got a little bit of reading time Thank God I got there early because parking in the city is a little confusing for me. So, Kingdom of the Wicked. I read up to chapter 41, page 314. And you guys, I love this with every fiber of my being. I'm so grateful that I purchased the, I think it's the, the bookish box and then the fairy loot? Yeah. Those two editions of Kingdom of the Cursed. I will be getting a third copy to annotate. This is the only copy I have of Kingdom of the Wicked, so I did tab it even though it has gold sprayed edges. I love this. I'm 85% of the way through. I've got some of what I wanted. There's been things that have been thrown around. Some drama has been happening, and I'm all here for it. I am so invested. I love this so much. Chef's kiss. But, usually I would say I regret not picking it up before, all that blah 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 of my never-ending TBR. However, 
I am so happy I did not pick this up before because I don't have to wait a gazillion and ten years for the sequel. Everything's gonna be fresh and dandy in my memory. I'm gonna put it on my October TBR and your girl doesn't have to wait a whole entire year. Plus I think this is just a duology. So it was a smart move without knowing it. This I don't have a lot left of. However, I'm not going to torture myself and read this in empty university hallways waiting for my classes. I'm going to wait till I come home tomorrow, get in my PJs, get some food in my stomach, and end this. I have like 60 pages left. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be an emotional mess in front of all my colleagues. So some reading plans have changed. Uh, I still am bringing the Inheritance Games, no, the Hawthorne Legacy, with me tomorrow. However, instead of also, because I'm extra as fuck, instead of bringing Act Your Age Eve Brown, I'm going to be bringing The Heart Principle because I've been reading all the books I'm super excited for and then I'm probably gonna, you know, end up with least exciting books, kind of like The Heart Principle for the rest of the month, which I'm not gonna do that to myself because my reading is gonna go and I'm on a kick right now. I don't want it to stop. So I'm switching the two out because I've heard so many mixed things about The Heart Principle. So I thought, you know, I'll try to read a few chapters here and there. And I feel like uni, like it's appropriate for university because yesterday I watched books like Whoa, Mora's video where she wrapped up her reading and that book was in there and she said it's a lot heavier than we expected to be so I'm gonna sprinkle that in with some YA mystery and I'll keep Act Your Age Eve Brown and Smitten as my last two books for my TBR. So that's it. I'm gonna go to bed, watch a little bit of YouTube, fall asleep, and I'll catch you guys in the morning. Hello everyone! I thought I would change up the background and update you guys outside which feels weird because I still feel awkward and there might be noises but it's weird filming in my backyard but I'm done school I have a little haul for you guys after I went to exchange some stuff um, and do some uh, returns but this is my outfit I kind of feel like an elementary school teacher with my earrings and my dress and I swear my hair looked better this morning but it is now 6 p.m. I left home at 5.20, so it's been a day, but I have some reading updates. I didn't read anything in the Hawthorne Legacy, however, I did do some reading in the Heart Principle, which I picked up a few pages before I went to bed yesterday just to kind of help me fall asleep. I was immediately hooked by this writing style. I'm reading these completely out of order. This is the author's third book, my first book by this author, and I love it already. Um, I am 64 pages in, so a little over 20%. And I love this. I love both the characters. I love the dual perspective. The writing is definitely like my favorite thing about this so far. And I really love... Um, the setup for how our characters have met and the man in here is the absolute Swedish gem. As of now, I love him. Rough exterior, softy inside. I love it. I'm not going to talk too much about how they meet because I don't think it says so in the synopses. Obviously these things will get a little bit darker. Our main male protagonist, uh, I believe is in remission from cancer and our main female character is kind of in a professional rut. She is a violinist and she's kind of experiencing burnout and she's going through therapy and she's learning things about herself which kind of helped the story go along. I am loving this honestly. I'm surprised but the writing style is just so 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 bingeable. So I'm probably going to read a little bit more of this tonight once I finish Kingdom of the Wicked. But I wanted to tell you guys, I read a little bit before my first class of the day. So yeah. I'm going to go be a little loaf and 
probably watch some YouTube, maybe take a nap, and then I'll have dinner. But yeah, it's technically the beginning of my weekend. I have a little thing tomorrow, and then I have Thursday and Friday off, and then I work the weekend, so celebration time is nap time because your girl is tired. I had four hours of sleep, so. Hello! Um, sorry for the messy hair, but I wanted to update you guys with my little haul I mentioned before, before I forget, and starts feeling super sleepy because this girl is clearly tired. So, two things I got in the mail today. One of them is a book, another one is an audio CD. So let's start with the audio CD. I got this, which these kinds of like CD discs of audiobooks usually sell for like 30 to 40 dollars. I got this for three dollars. It was the last one super discounted on Amazon for some reason and this is a book I've been wanting to read and I wanted to try this author for a long time. Um, this author is usually indie published and this is a... Um, it sounds so good. It says mistaken identity, um, unmistakable spark, it's game time. And uh, the entire premise is we start off with a lie on Valentine's Day, my blind date isn't the studious guy expected. He's a drop-dead gorgeous player with a si with sinful amber eyes. Somehow we end up at his penthouse. I blame the gin and tonic. And then she realized, the girl in this novel realizes he's famous. He's like a super well-known quarterback. And he made her sign an NBA. She fakes it and writes Juliet on it and like leaves. But then they encounter again during a play. Yeah, community theater. He's gonna be Romeo. She's gonna be Juliet. I'm gonna love this. I'm starting to commute a lot more to and from school and to in my internship and I don't have the aux cord. My car is a 2008 but I don't have that option so I need CDs. So this was a great find. And then I got the Charm Offensive. This released yesterday on September 7th so happy book birthday to this. This is kind of like a bachelor's romance but the bachelor guy falls in love with the producer of the show. Um, essentially, we follow, it's a male-male romance, which is super exciting. Uh, it follows the producer of the show called Ever After. It's been super popular, it's been doing well, and he's been able to like make the show like super engaging and everybody loves it, even though his life and love life kind of suck. And then comes in the newest kind of bachelor and He's got a crappy attitude, he gets super camera shy in front of everyone, he's kind of arrogant and because of that the producer has to like spend time with him obviously and then they end up opening up to each other and fall in love behind the scenes. I have a video idea for this and a couple other books, hopefully I'll get to it soon. I'm super excited. This was heavily discounted as well, I think I got this for $12 um, on release which is great but I was like 90% sure I wanted to pick it up because everybody's been raving about it but then I saw Emily at Emily Boucher who is my friend here on YouTube. Her channel will be linked in the description. Give it five stars. I saw that on Twitter I think and then I just pressed order and now it's here. And then I went to the mall because I wanted to return some things. I haven't gone to that specific mall in maybe like three years but it's right next to my bus stop which is super convenient. But I went in to Bath and Body Works to get some more Pretty as a Peach uh, shower gel. This is my shower gel of choice and I'm running low on the one I have currently. And I don't like to go to the mall all the time. When I get off that freaking bus and I still have like 35-40 minutes to drive, trust me, I don't want to go wandering in the mall. But I did today because I had to you know, do adulting stuff. So I got an extra one for when I run out and then I went to Lush and got myself a bubble bar which I moved away for two years and I didn't have a Lush nearby. I had to order online all the time and the shipping is very expensive so now that I literally go to school and commute right beside a Lush it's gonna be so convenient but I went in for a bubble bar I chose this one. I think it's the cloud one. It says to smell kind of like strawberries and I love the scent. I really love the bubble bars. 
Uh, I love the bath bombs as well, but the bubble bars are just fun because you don't need a lot and it's just suiting to take a bubble bath. So I'm probably going to do that tonight. But yeah, that's it for my ramblings. I'm going to go have dinner and take a nap because I'm tired. Hello! I really didn't update you guys much yesterday, but it was a rough couple of days and I'm still tired. It is Thursday. It's 7 20. I'm soon gonna start dinner, but I wanted to update you guys on a few things. I was an adult today, cleaned my entire apartment, had my little side hustle this morning. Sorry, my throat was dry. And now I'm ready to sleep. Yesterday I planned on doing some reading. I fell asleep at like 8, 8, 8 30 and woke up this morning and had stuff to do. But now I'm like done for the day. Tomorrow I'm probably going to work on some uni readings and then just spend the day doing whatever I want. I just took a bath. This is I'm going to wash my hair tomorrow hair so don't judge your gal. Also lighting might be a little bit yellow because the sun is setting and you know we're just going to roll with it. This is a vlog but I finished it just before I uh, used some of the reading sprints that Becca did on Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday? I think it was Tuesday. And I had like 50-ish pages to read. You guys, I am so thankful I have two special editions of Kingdom of the Curse coming and that I have this special edition of Kingdom of the Wicked. This is also signed by Carrie. This is my second yeah, second book assigned by the author and oh my god, this is a five star. I put it through Call Pile, which is a rating created by G at Book Roast, if you aren't familiar with it. Um, and even though, like I mentioned, the first 40 pages probably aren't the best, the rest of this slaps. Like honestly, I'm a lack of words for how much I love this. This made me so happy. The ending your gal is happy. I literally put a countdown on my phone. We only have 25 days until the release of Kingdom of the Cursed and I went back and looked at the special editions I ordered and I did in fact order the fairy loot one as well as the bookish box edition. Sorry my cat's very needy today but they won't ship out like in October so I'm gonna buy a physical copy on release day or the day after because that's when I have access to a bookstore. Pick this up honestly. Not every It's not everyone's cup of tea but like Carrie can do no wrong in my eyes. This is like the fifth book I've read by her and they were all four or five stars. So yes, love it, love to see it. However, I'm not really reading as quickly as I would have liked to. So I think that instead of my first original goal, which was, to, which was to finish both The Hawthorne Legacy and The Heart Principle this week, I'm probably just going to focus on The Heart Principle now and then move on to week three with hopefully just three books on my TBR. That would be great. Especially since two of them are a romance and one of them is a like mystery that's like 300 pages long. I think that's very doable. So, this is probably what I'm going to read of tonight. I'm on page 64. If I... I would read 100 pages, but that's... That's a lot of pages. So I'll see. If I could get to at least page 100, that would be great. And then I can read more and use the rest of the sprints I didn't use up today, tomorrow. So that's kind of my game plan. I wanted to update you guys. But yeah, I'm starting to be hungry and sleepy now so I'm gonna go but I literally had to like post even on my personal Instagram of how much I loved Kingdom of the Wicked because even people who don't read should pick this up and Stocking Jack the Ripper obviously my forever baby I can't wait to get my book sleeve if you guys didn't watch last week's vlog which I didn't I just mentioned in passing, I ordered a dust jacket, dust jacket book sleeve um, that acts kind of like you would uh, use like a book. Why can't I talk? 
kind of like you would use this, but instead it's a dust jacket and I ordered it from Book Bestie UK. I'll leave their in, their Etsy shop down below, but I heard of that from Becca at the Becca Fowl, whose channel I will also link down below. I loved, I love her and I binged so many of her vlogs. Um, but it's Stocking Jack the Ripper themed. It's Audrey Rose and Thomas on a book sleeve. It's going to be for paperback formats because I, I read a lot of romance and I kind of want to hide the naked men on the covers when I go to uni. So, yes, all of my babies. I love Wrath. I love Amelia. I don't know what's going to happen to them, but I'll figure it out in 25 days. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the end of the vlog. It is Friday evening. I'm going to cut this vlog short. Uh, I realized that it would be impossible for me to film, edit, upload on my regular uploading schedule, so I will include this weekend's reading with week three of Bookopathon. I hope you guys are okay with that. Uh, so for the Bookopathon, I only finished Kingdom of the Wicked this week, but you know what? It was a five-star read. I had a good time, plus I had uni, so I'm still proud, but... Yesterday, I did a little bit of kin- What was I trying to say? Kindle reading. Uh, I found this novella on Amazon for like a dollar when I was browsing like royalty romances because I was kind of in the mood for that. And it was called A Prince Next Door. It's by Nicole Casey and it was like 120-ish pages of a novella and I read that before bed. I had a really good time with it. It's kind of smutty, uh, royal. It's essentially this- I'm not gonna say too much more about it because like I don't want to spoil but it's about this man who's a prince uh, in Europe but comes to America for a bachelor party of one of his friends who's getting married and he kind of hits he hits it off with the hotel receptionist and it's a dual perspective narrative and it follows them falling in love and all of that stuff. I really enjoyed it. It came out at a four star, four star on Calpile. So if you're looking for a little easy breezy novella, it's great. So I'm at 42 books for the year now. I'm only 10 off from my goal. I should be a lot further along this far in the year, but considering all my health issues, very proud of that. I also need to make more progress in my book off on TBR because I still have four books left, but I still have like two and a half weeks. So I'm not going to be too hard on myself, but if you want to see what I think about all the other books that I have left to read or just want to support my channel, do not forget to subscribe down below. If you've made it this far, comment a pink emoji in the comment section, and I'll see you very soon with another video. Goodbye, guys. Happy reading.